So I've been getting a lot of questions on how do we maintain the uh, fire or the heat on this thing. Some of y'all have been having some issues where it spikes too high, um, overshooting, stuff like that. Now I use the fireboard. I'm gonna go into depth in this video a little bit more than usual to kind of show you guys how I do it. How do I, um, you know, what's my process of getting the fireboard connected and getting this thing up to speed, getting it up to the right temperature, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys that also in this video and hopefully it helps you guys out. I know a lot of y'all have had questions, you know, on whether or not to buy an IBS or if y'all should go to an offset. I get a lot of those questions all the time and uh, to be honest, I'm gonna do my best to try and help you guys understand, you know, um, the pros and the cons of each one, you know? Um, for me, I love the IBS for like catering, smoking, set it and forget it, that's it, right? It's, it's, it's a very, very well-tuned machine. It'll maintain the temperature. If I want it at 225, it'll stay at 225 for like 30 hours. I've had it stay at 225 for 30 hours straight before. Um, and it wasn't because I was cooking for 30 hours. I, I ran it 30 hours, or it was like about 20 hour cook that I ran some briskets in there, uh, about 18 to 20 hours. And then I said, you know, let me let's let the fire do its thing. Let's let the whole coals run out because there was a lot of coals left. So instead of turning them out, I went ahead or smothering them, I went ahead and just let it go. And it was 30 hours, almost 36 hours that this thing ran on that little snake pattern at 225. It never went higher or lower. So this thing can do some amazing work. Now, when it comes to the offset, the offset is more versatile, right? You can do grilling on it, right? You can, you know, fajitas, uh, uh, any type of steaks that you want, hamburgers. You can use the griddle for hamburgers if you want also veggies, uh, poppers, all these different things you can do with that offset on top of also doing briskets and long smokes, right? The thing about those long smokes on that one is you do have to keep putting wood about every 45 minutes to an hour, you gotta put another log on there. As long as you maintain that right, that temperature will stay you know, perfect also. I've That'll fluctuate a little bit more on the offset from 225 to maybe, I don't know, 250, something around there. I never have it go crazy. It usually stays pretty constant. It's usually when you put that next log that sometimes it goes up a little bit, but usually not too bad. This guy though, it just stays constant. Um, the thing I will recommend is Make sure that this thing is fired up at least an hour ahead of time, maybe an hour and a half even. That way, from when you wanna actually put the meat on the grill, okay? Make sure it is, uh, you give yourself enough time for that temp to go up, because it does take a little while for it to come up. If you rush it and you like put all the fire and you get it up to temp, it's gonna overshoot your temp, okay? So it needs to ease up to temp. Once it's there, it's gonna stay there. So anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit later on all the ins and outs of what I did with the fireboard, the fan, uh, how much I have the openings, uh, where I put the probes, all that good stuff. And hopefully this helps you guys out, make a decision on whether you wanna stick with the IBS or if you wanna go with the offset. Uh, either way, you can't go wrong. If you can buy both, get both. Um, but I understand it is a large investment, uh, but you will not be unhappy with your investment. And that, along with the customer service that you get over there at Lone Star Grills, it's incredible. So anyway, guys, uh, I'll let you go. This thing's fired up already. Uh, I'm waiting for it to get up to temp because we're going to put that turkey in there. Okay, everybody. So uh, I've been getting a lot of questions on the IVS, on how do you maintain the temperature, stuff like that, you know, with the fireboard and, and the openings. And, you know, sometimes I just take it for granted that, you know, when I say set it for 225 and leave it, you know, I, I do have the fireboard and I've already been using this thing for quite a while. And so I've, I guess I've gotten used to how to set it on pretty easy. Um, but, you know, I kind of forget when I first started, it wasn't easy at the very beginning. You know, it took me a while to figure out how to get this thing to stay at 225. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you guys what I do and hopefully this will help you guys out with your cooks, you know, on how to set it up. So here we go. First thing I do, uh, you know, this here um, is your, your inlet valve. Now this part uh, doesn't come with the IVS. So it looks like this, right? Nothing there. So they sent the adapter, right? I got this adapter sent to me. Uh, <clears throat> and then I bought uh, this fireboard. So, this is the fireboard fan, okay? 
And then this is an adapter um, that uh, I ended up getting made for me, right? Um, so you can take these off, right? In you know, if you want, you can take them off or whatever you want to do. I just leave mine on the whole time because this is all I use the fireboard for. Usually is on the IVS. Sometimes I'll use it on the uh, the beast, the smoker. Uh, but basically, what I do is I come over here and I just kind of screw this in, really easy. And I just go to what stops. Uh, it's about right there, right? <clears throat> I got my kids riding bikes out there. Okay, so it's about right here. If you want, you can, you know, back it off a little bit. If you want it to be in the down position, it's not going to hurt. You know, if you want it like that, I can leave it like that too. Um, just make sure these are nice and tight. So that's it for the fireboard and connecting it. Okay, then run the cable up and I just let it sit right here for now. I'm gonna put my fireboard right here, you know. I wish it did have a longer uh, cable, this fireboard fan, or if I had, if I could go back and do this again, I would make like a shelf, like right here, get a shelf installed on this side, so that way I could put all my stuff here. Uh, but, you know, I didn't really think of that, so. Anyway, all right, so here is my fireboard, okay? Uh, this is the fireboard too, here are the, uh, inlets for it or the ports for it right these are our controls right here okay and this is where our power goes in and if you had another drive you can put that regular fan drive there right um, but I'm gonna show you guys how I use this so you can technically charge this up and just let it run uh, the fan drive on its own right so the fan drive uh, let me get the cable here so the fan drive goes in right here okay and if I turn this guy on go this way right turn it on it says fireboard so hey guys what's up uh, but it says like the oven temp so it's got the six um, channels or the six ports so one two three four five six right <clears throat> I usually have the first one uh, which is my temperature I put oven temp in there or you could put um, you could type and put IBS ambient temp whatever you want to put you can type there uh, the reason I had put oven temp last time was because one of my briskets was done, but I needed to keep it heating, so I put it in the oven at about 150 or something, and I let it just go overnight uh, just to sit there uh, to stay uh, warm throughout the night. Anyway, back to this. So, the thing about this is once you plug your port in, so like this is going to be my number one, right? So, my camera keeps turning off here. So, I put my ambient temperature in there right so it's gonna take a little while let's see if y'all can see it 61 degrees it's cold out here in san antonio i know some of y'all like in the negatives but for me this is cold so anyway so that's that when i turn the fan on you see how my battery you can see it there the battery is only like halfway charged so the thing about this fireboard that i noticed is it will not charge that fan or power that fan to 100% with just the battery. So I use the cable and I bought this little guy for me right here. This is a little power box right here. And it's got three little USB-C ports on it, right? And I got me a USB uh, cable here. It's like a Thunderbolt cable also. It's fairly long, right? And what I do, is let me show you. I'll put this stack it where it needs to be. I put my fireboard right here on the top. Then I have my extension cord. I just wrap it around the tube there to, to the stack just to make sure it's stable, right? And then I'm gonna plug this into there. So hold on one second. So now you can see it actually says 12 volt now. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. I don't know, it's like a lot of reflection. Right there, see it says 12 volt. If I take the power out, it's gone. See how it's gone? If I plug the power back in, 12 volt. See right there, it says 12 volt, okay? So that is the way I run it. So from there, I put that on top of my IVS right here, okay? And then what I do is I'll cover it. And I'll cover it because of rain or potential sun, like in the summer, this thing will get hot and I don't want the sun just bearing down on it. So sometimes I'll cover it with a little pot or a pan or sometimes I'll cover it with a 
with a cloth, something like that. I'll put a cloth and I'll cover it uh, just to keep it from overheating, okay? Um, so that's where that goes. And then my ports, all my, my, my main port goes through the smokestack. I don't know if you can see it, so I can get up there and show you. It'll make y'all sick real quick. <laughs> From all this moving around. But here's my smokestack, okay? So I open it up, you can see this goes down inside the stack. You see right there is where it comes down and I have it measuring the temperature from right there, okay? So yeah, I need to spray this down a little bit with some Pam to give it a little bit more of a, a glistening, glossy look, but it's still in pretty good condition for this thing being almost three years old. So, uh, and it gets heavy, heavy use. Now what I think I do need, I'm gonna need some more of these gaskets right here. So I'll have to get with Chris over at uh, Lone Star Grills, get me another uh, gasket uh, for both the top and the bottom here. This guy, which is technically the water port, right? When I first started, I'll open that up all the way and then I make sure that this is open all the way, right? So they're both open, right? And I just let them fly, let them go. Um, if you're not sure, if you don't remember, you know, like you can see that straight and sideways it closes. Straight and then sideways it closes, right? So I'm open and if you're not too sure, you can either take the fan off and look or you can go in here and look down in there and here you can see daylight out there, right? And if I close it, and I close it, there's no more daylight, right? You can see that ball. Also what I do is I have this little guy here, okay? This is my little smokestack tool. This is, this covers the water port, okay? I did notice that with the water port, this guy right here, right? <clears throat> my air would sometimes go uncontrolled. It would get really hot. Sometimes I'd pull air in if I didn't have water. So here we go again. I'm just talking and talking and talking. Hopefully this makes sense to some of y'all. If you fill this up with water, like you're supposed to or intended, it covers that hole back over there, right? So that's where the water, when you pour it through the stack, will come in through there and it'll pour out here, right? So it covers, there's no airflow, it's just water, it's trapped. <clears throat> but I have started cooking where I'll put trays here. So I put the, um, the foil trays here and here. So there is no water, okay? The water goes in the foil trays. So by doing that, I'm allowing air to actually get sucked in here. I've noticed that, whether it's scientific or whatever, I don't know. But I have noticed in this particular cooker, when I don't put the water in there, it actually, it, you can see smoke coming out the top and it feels like I'm getting more airflow in here. And I don't necessarily want that. I want the airflow to be only from the fan, only from the fan. So that's why I made this little guy, just got some foil. Again, all I do is I cover this and I make sure no air comes in. So it's only the smokestack and the fan that is all that's going to control it once the fire is going once the fire is rocking and rolling i close that for sure okay that's the way it works now as far as the smokestack goes you can see i pretty much hold it right about here that's about as wide open as i go right there with that smokestack i just kind of sometimes i'll go all the way open sometimes I'm about right there so I guess that's about halfway I can't, can't really see I'm just kind of going off of what that thing does right there how that looks to me okay and I'll just the only reason I close it is at night I'll close it when everything's done but when I'm cooking I'm about right there okay so that's the way it looks that's my smokestack that's how I have it so it's a good thing and a bad thing <laughs> Lone Star Grills makes these things heavy duty right these things are awesome but the bad thing about it is that they're so daggum heavy <laughs> you know let me go lower so you can see how i'm gonna set this guy up all right so we got that guy
and then I'm at an awkward angle because I'm trying not to hit the camera. Pull it out about right there, okay? So about like that, that's how we set up the plates. All right, so then I have these chunks of wood here, right? Usually I have post oak, right? This one here, I think these are hickory. I had a little bit of hickory left uh, from another cook we did. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with the turkey today. But you can see small chunks, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put them throughout in here, little pieces. I like to st stand them up if I can. Something like that, okay? If I was doing a longer cook with like briskets or something like that, I would probably go all the way even when I cook like four briskets or eight briskets up in here, usually this is about how far it'll go. I never really go over here. This has just been extra. Uh, honestly, I've never gone this far, okay? So it's usually just right here. So I'm thinking with this turkey, it's gonna take about four hours, maybe five. It depends on how long it takes for this thing to get up to temp. Um, so I think that's about all the wood I'm gonna use. That'll give me enough smoke flavor that I want. Plus, I'm using b, &B charcoal, which is a uh, competition. It's still oak, okay? So these are oak uh, charcoal briquettes. And I like to use the mixture of Franklin barbecue post oak briquettes also, right? So I do a half and half, half of each one, okay? So we're gonna get that started right now. I'm gonna start getting this. Uh, there. Here goes the B&B first. Come back right there. smoke flavor you can always put more wood in there but I noticed these char these charcoal or briquettes whatever you want to call them I noticed they do give pretty good smoke okay don't want to waste those so get those little guys out All right. right there all right That's pretty much it, okay? So also, another thing is, you wanna make sure that you don't go too high with this, as far as you don't want the flame to start kicking over this way, okay? Because you don't want these to be on fire at the same time as those, otherwise it's just gonna get too hot, and fireboard fan or not, it's not gonna manage the fire, it's just gonna get way too hot, okay? So, we got these here. I think I'm gonna be good with just two, um, two snakes right here, you know, one here, one here. I think this will be just enough for the turkey to get cooked. I'm not cooking anything else after that, okay? So this is my setup, guys, right here. I have the oak in there. You saw how I put it in there. It looks like I don't have any in there. And then sometimes what I'll do, if I just feel like having fun, I'll throw chips on top or I'll throw one big log on there also as well. You know, uh, this thing is very versatile as far as what you can put in there, you know, you can feel free to mix and match however you guys want to get the perfect smoke uh, flavor that you guys want. Some of y'all might use pecan, some of y'all use cherry, whatever. Um, I like post oak, okay? And in this case, hickory is just as clean and just as nice also, okay? Okay, here we go, guys. I've got my propane torch here. Now, you don't need this. It just makes life a lot easier, okay? Because um, you can just hit it and just hold it right here and it'll get nice and hot, okay? Um, you can still get, you know, the chiminea, 
put it on this side and when it's done you can pour the coals over here and let that go that way if you want also um, but I just find that to be a little bit more I don't know dirty sometimes and the, sometimes the coals will go where I don't want them to go so here I can kind of control it so anyway brand new thing of propane I'm never I never squeeze this guy here you squeeze it that's just too much propane you don't want that okay you're gonna blow something up all I do is I hit the plus sign right here and I just barely hear it and now we're lit okay now we're lit so let's try that again let me show you again all right it's off I hit the plus sign hit it right here and that's it okay we're on and I just put that right here in the corner now if I want some more pressure I'll just turn this on a little bit more right and right there that's it so I'm going to do this live with you guys real time to show you how long I leave this here okay and I'm just doing this little corner right here you can see they're already starting to light a little bit now it does take a while okay it does take a while but we're gonna do this real time so you can actually see what I do and then that way you guys at home will know am I doing it right am I doing it wrong oh no it's taking so long oh no it's not taking long enough or oh no I think I'm lighting too many charcoal going this way or too little don't worry about it if you light more going that way no big deal it's it'll be fine you know as long as you don't like the whole dadgum thing you know and even then I've seen some people like the entire entire box and uh, I just don't do that thing. but this is about what I'm gonna light right here you can see it's already turning white all right so I'm gonna leave this here and I'll probably time lapse it for you guys so that way you don't just stay here for five minutes looking at this Now remember, um, I have the fireboard fan connected right now, but it's not on yet. I'm gonna turn this on after I get that going. Right now, I just have all the valves open, okay? Except for the top, I have it covered with that piece of foil. Okay, all right, let's keep going. So that was about five minutes right there okay so I turned this off now I'm gonna go turn the, the valve off now remember I turned off that valve but remember there's still gonna be propane in the line so you don't want to put it away that way so you open this plus sign you hear that gas coming out that's extra gas that could be flammable in your garage you don't want that so now it's open no more gas coming out we can close that let this cool off put it to the side so now you can see right here these coals are nice and hot i can barely keep my hand by there they are hot they are cooking so now it's going to start to flow it's going to start to go that way this way and then that way hopefully by then the turkey's going to be done okay so we're going to go ahead and put this in Okay, push that all the way in there. All right, so now we've got that there. We can close this up, all right? Uh, there we go. We can close that. You already see the smoke coming up the top here, all right? We're gonna close this, okay? And now, I'm gonna screen recording at the same time, so that way, if it doesn't work, I'll just import this. So basically what I'm gonna do, right, if you look at the app, it shows me the oven temp, right right there's the oven temp i'm calling it oven temp it's the actual ivs temp i can change that right so i can click on that i can change the label so instead of oven temp let's call it uh ivs internal temp right so we're done with that okay max is 275 i don't know if you can see that there max is 275 and that's just in case, you know, uh, if it gets too hot, it's, I don't mind briskets getting that hot, right? But today we're cooking at 300. So let's say 325 will be our max, right? So 325, that's gonna be our max, okay? 
And if you want to put a minimum temp on there, that's fine too. You can put a minimum temp. I'm probably going to have to put this uh, screenshot that I have going on in there because you're getting a hard reflection and you really can't see what I'm doing. Um, so anyway, so that's that. Okay, so now you can see it's going to say waiting on temperature readings, 76 degrees inside, right? Uh, internal temp, um, 325 is where we're going to go. Now you can see here that the fan is not on, okay? So we are going to turn the fan on right now. So set point, I want it at 300 degrees. So 300, set, right? So now I hit set, okay? Now guess what? The fan, the fan just cranked up. The fan just started. It says set temp to 300. Fan speeds to 49, 75. It's gonna go all the way to 100%. Okay? So that fan's gonna start kicking that fire up now. It's gonna be blowing right on those coals. But we're set at 300, 100% speed. Right now it's at 78 degrees in there. If I wanted to, I could get my, um, propane and fire I could put some fire in all the inside the chamber and let that just get really hot pretty quick uh, but I don't think I'm gonna do that right now because I still got a lot of stuff to set up for this quick anyway that's it right there you can see we have already got smoke coming out the top and that's just from the fan as you can see this was open at the very beginning when I was doing the torch but now I'm done I got the fan on that's closed that's wide open fans kicking it we've got it going to the fireboard right there we are on the fireboard all connected i've got power right no battery i've got actual power connected to it and look you can see smoke's already kicking out the top it's already going to start coming up the temp tilt your gauge we'll start letting us know where we're at again we were barely at 70 something degrees so it's just getting started right now all righty it is 332 so we're getting started a little late here and we'll see how long it takes for this thing to get up to temp all right there we go get this turkey on there lay it nice and flat right i don't think i'm going to worry about these arms they keep flipping up um i want them to stay tucked behind but for whatever reason i can't get it to stay uh yeah that one last one last try be extra hardcore Ugh, there <laughs> hopefully that'll stay all right now get this guy pushed in okay there we go so that's it our turkey is in we are up to temp so now I'm just going to get that foil, put it down here with a little bit of water in there, put it underneath so we can catch the giblets, and that's it. But I'm going to close this up so I don't lose too much heat. put tons of water in there just because the grease and stuff will start dropping on it I don't want it to be overflowing with grease but that's it right there we're gonna let that sucker cook if you look right here uh, there we go if you look you see that spatchcock turkeys on there it's all seasoned up it's gonna be a few hours maybe about four hours or so we're gonna let that thing cook and see where it gets I'm gonna put the temperature probes in there uh, probably in a little while also my goodness, that is looking good. Looks like that skin's getting nice and crispy. See how it's catching mostly everything down here. If we wanted to, we could make some uh, gravy out of that, but I'm not because I had water in there, so I didn't want to dilute it. But I mean, that's that's looking really good. So let's just take a temp real quick because I think we're pretty close. And uh, I just, oh, it smells so good. <laughs> all right, so let me just leave about right there. I don't want to drip juice all over the place. So we're going in the breast here. 166. We want to be at 165, so we're good there. Let's try it over here. 168. So we're we're done there. You can see how it's starting to uh, 
you know, pull up here from the bone, that's a good sign. The thigh, we want to be about 185. Or about 190 right there. 185. Look at that. It's perfect. Little, little less. It'll, it'll come up the temp. 190-ish. Sorry, it's the light reflecting on that. 194. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. It's going to go into my little pan right here. We're going to put it inside, wrap it up, and let it sit for another 30 minutes. So real quick, this is the outro to the IVS video. Um, this was the IVS portion and all that detail that I was putting was really meant to be part of the turkey video that I made. But man, I talk so much and I put so much detail in there that the video is going to be over an hour long and there's no way I'm going to make y'all watch an hour long video like that. So I needed to chop it up. 30 minutes is enough, 25 to 30 minutes. And even that's too long. I, I need to make them shorter. But uh, I just have so much fun and I want to explain to you guys, you know, in detail what i've learned you know because i remember when i first started and how hard it was uh to get my pits up to temp the right way i've burned my fair share of briskets i've ruined my share fair share of food you know and it's not cheap to do that you know um so if i can help you guys out kind of skip the middleman skip the trial and error and you guys can just automatically get up to temp get where you need to be uh you know get I guess the tips and tricks that you need to be cooking where you want already, then that's what it's all about. If I can just save y'all some time, then that's what this is all about. So this IVS video will be its own video about 30 minutes long. Okay. Um, so I know I said, I went into detail. I tried showing you how I put the fan together, how the fireboard program works, how you open the valves and close the valves, how I keep the smokestack open and closed. Um, you know, where I run the cables, um, even the water. So the water, I think I didn't explain the best, but real quick, what I meant was I used to put water completely on the bottom in that bottom square area, fill the water and it would fill up over that little hole that was in there, right? Where you normally pour the water in. So no air could get in through that hole because the water was above it, right? But it was a, a nightmare to clean because at the end of the cook, you have all that water, all that grease, all that slush and slosh. It was just gross. So I'd have to get a trash bag. Sorry, car's going by. I'd have to get a trash bag, open that water valve, and pour all that water into that bag. And it would splash on me, get all over the floor. It was just gross and greasy, you know? So I'd put that in the trash can. Then I'd have to get a, like a, a spatula or something, scrape up all that goop, throw it away, scrape up the goop, throw it away. It was just so gross. And so I talked to you guys, and you guys had a lot of good feedback for me on what to do, right? And so you guys mentioned, get some foil trays, right? Those big foil trays that you see me using now. And it's been a game changer. So I put those foil trays in there now and I put water in those, right? And so now the grease and the goop and everything falls in those. And when I'm done with cooking, guess what? Cool them off, pick them up, throw those in the trash. Pick them up, throw them in the trash and the cleanup is so much better. But by doing that, what I was trying to explain in the video was that little circle now that was normally filled, covered by water and no air could come in. Well, now I have two trays for the water but the area around it has airflow. So now the air can actually come in to that little hole. Now, I don't know if it really is coming in through that hole or it's exiting through that hole or it's creating some type of velocity. Scientifically, I don't know what's happening, but I did notice when I used those trays, my temperatures would spike higher, okay? And it was harder to maintain my temps and that was frustrating. So I made that little cap and I put it over this, that water stack, preventing any air from in or out or any movement there it's almost as if the water is covering that hole again, right? And now it maintains the water perfectly. I mean, it maintains the temperature perfectly. So hopefully that makes a little more sense. I know I didn't explain it very well in the video. But anyway, guys, thank y'all so much for everything, all of your support. Fatty's Barbecue, we're trying to grow. Uh, hopefully next year, uh, things are gonna, I, I'm hoping, I'm praying that we can really kick it up uh, a little bit more and and i'm hoping to get myself a uh food trailer and so i'm gonna have to hit up lone star grills to get a, another one of these ivs's here um and maybe uh another uh, offset burner uh to mount on that trailer and um and hopefully be able to provide some food around san antonio and see more smiles on people's faces because so far with the catering gig and all these people just uh just to see the smile on their faces when they get food 
uh, the barbecue from Fatty's Barbecue, it just, it just, it makes you feel really, really good to know that you have something special. So hopefully the YouTube channel will help me out with that. You know, I can, you know, get some money from their financial situation let's see if we can get enough to raise money to get that get that trailer um and like i said i'm about to hit up uh, chris over there at, uh, at lone star grills and be like hey let's put me on the list for another one here um guys at lone star grills it's y'all just been really amazing um really supportive and uh i just can't tell you guys enough how much your products are just awesome you know i'm a true believer in your product and i know i've made some believers out of other people as well um and so you deserve all the credit here for really for how my barbecue is coming out because before it didn't come out like this you know now that i have these tools it helps me so much more that all i have to focus on is my taste you know my seasonings uh, the wood i don't have to worry about is this thing rusted out or is it going to work or anything like that i know it's going to be there you know and those of y'all watching back there that that build this thing man thank y'all so much you, your craftsmanship is just epic and i can see the pride that y'all take in building these things you know if i didn't know better i would think that it was completely built by a machine right the welds are so immaculate the welds are so beautiful the paint jobs is great on it uh you know the you could the I don't know the tolerances if that's what it's called like you know there's nothing that's off you know it's all linear it's all lined up all the metals lined up perfectly like i don't know how you do it but it's amazing y'all's craftsmanship and y'all's hard work is amazing so i truly appreciate y'all in the shops over there those of y'all putting in that work i really appreciate it you know um and like i said as a consumer i will be returning to you guys because of that you know yes chris the front office amber all you guys you are amazing you know you have an amazing product but you've put together an awesome staff that is helping support you guys and it's just it's amazing i mean even the crating when i got this thing in a crate it wasn't like cardboard and, and paper and, and some plastic wrap or whatever no it was two by fours pallets you know uh wrapped up in a crate you know immobilized where I, you, it wouldn't be moving around i mean plywood uh, well, like saran wrap all the way around it to just keep it from getting scratched i mean it was amazing how much pride y'all put into just shipping this thing you know where other companies they get their money that's it they're happy they got their money they're, they're done but you guys continuously support and i see it online as well in your channels i see it also on your facebook page where if somebody has an issue man y'all make it right all the time and that's what makes lone star grills amazing so those of y'all that are questioning or not too sure give them a call you know i don't get paid by them or anything like that but give them a call and you'll see you know how well you're treated and yes it does take a while to get your pit because you know they're in such high demand they got a waiting list you know uh so get on there soon and, and hopefully start now and get ready for father's day or something like that or mother's day and get yourself uh, on the list so that way your pit will be ready to go and you can start cooking but Anyway, guys, I know I'm just speaking from the heart. I talk a lot. There's a long, long outro, more than y'all need. I appreciate all of your support for Fatty's Barbecue. I'm going to continue working hard for you guys, and I'll see you on the next video.